For the longest time, SeaWorld San Antonio did not have enough adult rides to warrant a countdown of its own. But with the opening of Tidal Surge in 2022, they finally have enough rides to do so. So in this video, I will rank the top 10 rides at the SeaWorld Park. Before starting the countdown, I want to note that this list will only include the mechanical rides. I don't think it's fair to compare the animal exhibits and shows with something like a roller coaster. I know many coaster enthusiasts visit this park exclusively for the coasters, but you're doing yourself a major disservice if you skip the animal experiences. They're a fundamental part of any SeaWorld visit in my opinion. There will also not be any slides at Aquatica. I have only visited the Orlando location at this point, but this park does have a clone of Ihu's Breakaway Falls, which is better than most rides at the theme park. On to the list. Number 10. Super Grover's Boxcar Derby I still had to include one kitty ride on here. This Zier kitty coaster is a small oval layout, but the bunny hill can actually give a pop of airtime if you sit in the front row, and this one is comfortable for any rider, big or small. Number 9. Riptide Rescue This Huss airboat is a toned down troika. I like the look of the vehicles, and there are some near misses, but the forces aren't there compared to the other spinning rides. Number 8. Journey to Atlantis This mock water coaster is a basic layout. More or less, it's just a gimmicky shoot the shoots. After the lift hill, you have a turntable and a backwards drop. The latter does have a slight freefall sensation to it, but the main drop is the highlight. It's big, and you'll get a little lift. Then the splash is refreshing in that stifling Texas heat. I wish the ride had more theming elements like the other Journey to Atlantis's, but it's still a solid water ride. Number 7. Sea Swinger This is a solid Zamperla Frisbee. Other models may have more intense programs, but each max swing gives a nice pop of airtime still, and the cycle is considerably longer than another pendulum ride you'll see later on this list. Number 6. Rio Loco this Intamin River Rapids ride has a turbulent waterway with a good amount of rapids. Every few sends a solid splash into the boat to keep everyone on their toes. But the grand finale is the real soaker. You have a massive waterfall that has a good chance to hit the boat. And because of this ride's secluded layout, you cannot see it coming. Number 5. Wave Breaker This Intamin Moto Coaster is a brilliant location above the water. It is perfect for a jet ski theme. The tire drive launches have some yank to them. While this ride doesn't have any notable hills, the low turns have a bit of force to them combined with the cool visual that you're skimming across the water. Check out my review for more on this ride if you're interested. Number 4. Tidal Surge This Jumbo SNS Scream and Swing is a powerful ride. It has the same short cycle plaguing the other installations, but the forces are superior on this bigger one. The max swings have incredible speed and positive Gs. Then the airtime at the apex is fantastic. You get good sustained floater airtime. And when you're pushed forwards, the angle makes it feel like you're inverting at the top. It is a really neat sensation and visual. Number 3. Great White. This Balger Mabyard Invert is a familiar Batman the Ride clone. While this layout can be found at several parks across the globe, including another one across town, I always enjoy this ride. It is a forceful blitz of inversions and turns. The vertical loops cause me to gray out. The zero-g roll has some serious whip. The turns get my legs tingling. And the corkscrews are very snappy. And this ride is still smooth after two and a half decades of operation. Number 2. Texas Stingray Number 1 and 2 can easily flip depending how they're running. They are that close. When I first rode Texas Stingray, the ride eventually closed due to low temperatures, so I had a theory I hadn't experienced it at full force. I recently returned to the park on a considerably warmer day, and the ride was a bit better. The first half was equally as great. There's a perfect balance of sustained floater airtime, aggressive airtime pops, and good laterals. Then the finale had more speed this time. There were a few extra lateral and airtime moments to be had, which made the coaster feel more complete. It has developed a bit of a shimmy, which is worth monitoring, but it's perfectly rideable for me right now. And coming in, number one is Steel Eel. This Morgan Mini Hyper is a floater airtime machine. This coaster offers some of the most sustained airtime on the planet, especially because of how freeing those lap bar restraints are. 
I especially love the third drop. It seems like you're falling forever. And when the mid-course trim isn't hitting hard, the return run is similarly great floater airtime. The one downside with this coaster that I did note in my review is that the landings after each airtime moment can be uncomfortable due to the lack of seat padding, but I still love the oodles of airtime you experience. So those are the top 10 rides at SeaWorld San Antonio. I suspect most people have the same top two, but which do you prefer, Steel Eel or Texas Stingray? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this countdown, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.